Kathleen Kelly preferred to be called Kathy. At 12 years old, Kathy was a pretty independent child. It was also 1981 and things were different then. Kids were often left on their own while parents worked and were allowed to walk all over town to friends' houses, to the store, without much worry as long as they were home by dark. If you were a child of the 80s or earlier, you know what I'm talking about. And that was the case with Kathy Kelly in May of 1981. On May 22nd, 1981, Kathy went with family to the local skating rink. Later that evening, she showed up at her older sister's house. Her older sister, Judy, had children of her own and was home taking care of an infant when Kathy stopped by. Kathy came in for a bit and just told Judy that she left the skating rink because she was bored. And while that by itself was nothing out of the ordinary for Kathy to say, Judy couldn't help but get a weird feeling from Kathy. When Kathy left her house that night saying she was heading home, Judy had no idea that she'd never see her little sister again. Where is Kathy Kelly? Hello and welcome to the Where Are They podcast and a bonus episode taking us back to 1981. A huge thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the show and our mission, which is to continue sharing as many unsolved missing person cases as we can. News and information traveled differently in 1981, so cases this old are always harder to dig up information on. We do know that Kathleen Kelly was born on February 20th, 1969 in California. She had an older brother, Robert, who was about five years older than her. And after her father died, her mother, Annabelle Kelly, moved the family to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to be closer to relatives. Annabelle had another daughter too, and possibly other children, but we do know that she had an older daughter named Judith, and Judith was quite a bit older than Kathleen. In fact, she had children of her own before Kathleen was even born. It's also referenced that Kathleen preferred to be called Kathy, so I will call her Kathy from here on out. During the time leading up to Kathy's disappearance, she was living a troubled life at home, although the specifics of that we don't know. It is believed that certain family members didn't want to speak up or say anything while some people were still alive, which makes Kathy's life all the more mysterious. On May 22nd, 1981, several of Kathy's family members went to the Chess Arena skating rink to hang out for the night. At some point that evening, Kathy left the skating rink and walked to her sister's house. Her sister, Judy, even though she was 25 years older than Kathy, had a pretty close relationship with her. Judy had two teenagers of her own who had also gone skating that night, but she had stayed home with her infant. Judy also worked at the rink, as did her husband, so they spent many evenings there with the children. Kathy came in the house, and when Judy asked her why she had left the skating rink, Kathy told her that she was just bored there. And this was nothing out of the ordinary for Kathy, and Judy was not surprised. Kathy, as did most kids in those days, walked everywhere around town anyways, so to walk to her sister's house was not unusual. This skating rink, which is no longer there today, was on Pittsburgh Street in Cheswick, Pennsylvania. And her sister Judy lived over on Maxwell Street, which was under a mile walk. So it's really not hard to imagine a 12-year-old girl getting bored at the skating rink and heading out to walk to her sister's. Judy said that Kathy stayed for about an hour and then Kathy got up to leave. Judy remembers asking her if she was sure she wanted to walk home. And even though Kathy said yes, Judy had the feeling that there was something Kathy wasn't telling her. 
Kathy walked out the door and headed towards her home. I studied the map for a while to kind of get a feel for how far Kathy had to walk and for the area, and it really wasn't far at all. Even though the skating rink was in Cheswick and her home was in Springdale, it was just about two miles away. And her sister's house was right in the middle of the two, so her path that night makes complete sense. Judy couldn't remember exactly what time Kathy headed out, or even if it was dark yet or not. And Kathy was never seen or heard from again. And interestingly, she wasn't reported missing right away, even though she didn't make it home that night. Judy said that she believed that Kathy had finally run away from home. In fact, during one interview, well after Kathy's disappearance, Judy said, quote, My initial thought was, thank God she's gone and out of that house. Then it was, I lost my best friend. I never thought that she would never come back. Initially, Kathy is reported as a runaway and no one really looks for her, which is extremely sad. She was only 12. Judy said that law enforcement didn't have any searches and there were no organized searches by the family or the public. In fact, even as I researched this case, I came across a comment from a woman claiming to be Kathy's aunt who said that Kathy actually disappeared in 1980, not 1981, and they just finally took it seriously and logged it in the system in 1981. So we believe Kathy was last seen in Cheswick, Pennsylvania on May 22nd, 1981, but it very well might be May 22nd, 1980. And that is so frustrating for so many reasons. Does this mean a whole year went by with no one really looking for this missing 12-year-old girl? What if items or even remains were found and identified to be older than 1981? No one would connect them to Kathy thinking she wasn't missing yet. But maybe she was. This is overall just a very sad situation. Kathy's mom, Annabelle, did say many times to people throughout the years that she prayed she would have answers and would find Kathy while she was still alive. She would not get her wish, however, as she passed away in 2009, with her four children being listed as survivors in her obituary, and that included Kathleen. The media never really picked up Kathy's case, and even many locals who grew up in that area at that time said they never even heard of Kathy Kelly's disappearance. And while her family believed she had run away due to circumstances, and I believe they could very well be right, how does a 12-year-old hit the streets and survive? Did she have a plan? Did she have help? The family continued to refuse to elaborate on what they meant by tough home life because certain people were still alive. But I want to know, are they still alive? Does it even matter now? It's been 41 years. There are some things I want to look at a little bit closer here in this case. First is the number of children who went missing from that area around that time frame. Michelle Reidenbach disappeared from Evans City, Pennsylvania on September 22, 1981. This was about 30 miles from Cheswick, Pennsylvania. Tony McNatt Chiapetta vanished from Clinton, Pennsylvania on November 5, 1981. Sherry Mahan disappeared in 1985 from a small town about 20 miles from Cheswick. Christine Gunther vanished on October 26, 1981, also from a small town 35 miles from Cheswick. Sadly, Christine would be found deceased a week later. The other young girls have never been found. The other girls also received a fair amount of media attention while Kathy Kelly's case still went completely under the radar. About eight to nine years after Kathy's disappearance, Judy started receiving strange phone calls. Most of the time, there would be no one there. However, one time there was a voice, and the voice said, quote, You know who I am, and I'm fine. End quote. 
Judy believed it was very possibly her sister, Kathy. But was it Kathy or was it a prank? There have been phone calls like that linked to missing person cases in the past. Anthonette Cayadito, a case I covered last year, was the story of a young girl that disappeared in New Mexico back in 1986 and is another case in which some odd phone calls were received that were believed to have possibly been Anthonette. Did cases like this hit the news and give pranksters ideas? Authorities never linked the cases of Michelle, Tony, Sherry, Christine, and Kathy, but all were young girls vanished during a short window of time and from relatively the same general area around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I do realize there might not be any hard evidence to officially connect them, but it sure seems an odd and terrible coincidence to me. In looking at the map, there's some connected highways between all of these areas, including the Pennsylvania Turnpike, which would make taking someone and leaving the area quickly very possible, especially in the early 80s. What also really concerns me is the area that the skating rink was in, which was right on the banks of the Allegheny River. The river basically ran through town, very close to the rink, Judy's house, and Kathy's house. So we do have a few main theories and possibilities in this case. Theory number one, Kathy ran away and is alive and well somewhere. I only wonder if this is the case, how was she able to do it? How was she able to support herself and survive? And why not come back to the family as time went on? But maybe she was still too scared or even traumatized. Perhaps it was Kathy that called to let Judy know that she was okay, but had no intentions of ever coming back. Theory number two. Kathy met with foul play that night at the hands of a stranger or a serial killer. She was a young child walking home alone. Could someone have seen a crime of opportunity? I absolutely believe this is a possibility too, especially in light of the other girls also vanishing from the Pittsburgh area around the same time. Theory number three, Kathy met with foul play that night at the hands of someone she knew. What kind of troubles were happening at the home? Could it be someone Kathy knew that found her walking that night and did something to her? There are some reports that state that Kathy was also seen that night getting into an unidentified car. I want to mention that as a possibility, but I don't believe those reports were ever 100% confirmed. What do you think happened to 12-year-old Kathy Kelly? Do you think the cases of the missing girls could be connected? In 1981, Kathy was described as a Caucasian female, brown hair and brown eyes, standing 5 foot 2 inches tall and weighing around 100 pounds. She was wearing a gold cross necklace on the night she disappeared. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Kathy Kelly or any information at all about her case, please contact the Springdale Police Department at 724 724- 274-9022. Thank you so much for listening to Kathy's story, a tragic story from a long time ago that still remains unsolved. Please share Kathy's story and let's hope this is a cold case that we can see solved in the near future. Thank you also for being a supporter of the show. Please remember you can reach me anytime at canwefindthem at gmail.com with any feedback, questions, or case suggestions. We will be back again next week with another Unsolved Missing Person episode. And until then, stay safe and hug your loved ones.